Hello my friends, today we're going to be looking at chemistry paper 2, specifically the chemistry of the atmosphere. A nice quick little video for you, looking at the key stages of the evolution of the atmosphere, looking at the impact of greenhouse gases and their impact, looking at what we do with carbon footprint, how we measure it, and the pollutants that we have in our atmosphere. So, on to the first part. So the first part we're going to look at is the history of the atmosphere. And we're going to stick to the specification here so that we don't need to go into too much detail. Uh, what they need you to know are three parts really. What volcanoes have done, uh, what the cooling of the earth did, and what life has done for the atmosphere too. So we start 4.6 billion years ago, uh, when we think the atmosphere was very similar to Venus and Mercury. And bear in mind that we have no evidence of this 4.6 billion years ago. It's impossible for us to have any um, records from ice cores or anything like that. It's simply so long ago, but we can predict that's what it is and it's most likely theory. So volcanoes we know do throw out lots of gas, they throw out particularly CO2 and H2O. So those are the main gases, so H2O because it was really hot in the world at the time, um, CO2 and H2O were the main gases. We also had smaller amounts of nitrogen um, which was released steadily over a very long period of time and that's the most common gas in the atmosphere now. We also had small amounts of methane which is CH4 and ammonia, which is NH3. And all of these gases are uh, symbol, uh, structural formulae, not structural formulae, chemical formulae that we need to know. So if you don't know those, it's worth going over them, learning them as what they are. You'll also have to be able to draw covalent bonds for these structures. Um, that would have come up in, in paper one. The second stage was that the Earth started to cool. So if you imagine a scene where volcanoes start coming down, there were fewer meteorites hitting the Earth, the whole of the Earth got cooler. And as a result, this lovely H2O started to condense. And con condensation of water formed liquid water, which formed the oceans. So the atmosphere, as a result, was decreasing in the amount of H2O that was in the atmosphere, but also oceans allowed CO2 to dissolve into the oceans. And with CO2 dissolving into the oceans, um, we have a smaller amount of CO2 being present in the atmosphere too. That dissolved CO2 will actually also uh, contribute to forming something called uh, sediment, which is because the CO2 will precipitate in the oceans to form a sediment, and that sediment will go on to form sedimentary rock, uh, and it's also contributed later by life too. The third stage, which is about 2.7 billion years ago, is when algae and plants evolved through photosynthesis. And photosynthesis is a wonderful process of turning sunlight, CO2 and water into glucose and oxygen. And so what that did was turn some of the CO2 into oxygen, causing the O2 levels to increase in the atmosphere. And the O2 levels increasing were really important because that brought us the evolution of animals and aerobic respiration through animals, allowing them to really f thrive. The other part of the history of the atmosphere that we need to be aware of is the decrease of CO2 levels and how that happened. So we now have very low amounts of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, it's about 0.03%. Um, and the two that we've already seen were sedimentation and dissolving of CO2 in the ocean, uh, that's one. And the other is photosynthesis, uh, which is obviously very very useful for us in producing CO, uh, oxygen and glucose. And the other two that we need to be aware of um, are the formation of fossil fuels. So that's where carbon is locked away in organic matter, so locked away from living things into when they die, they're preserved as in fossil fuels. That's where CO2, carbon, is stored. And another place is in the formation of sedimentary rocks and the formation of uh, limestone. And limestone is thanks to uh, the sedimentation of things like shells from animals, such as uh, bivalves, things like that. Things that have very carbon-based shells, calcium and carbon-based shells. After looking at the history of the atmosphere, we need to think about how the atmosphere is now and how it's changing. And of course, the key focus on us at the moment is climate change, um, how the climate is potentially going to be changing into the future, and what we think is going to be the cause of that. And the main cause of it is going to be three greenhouse gases. Uh, they are CO2, methane and water. But the main two that we're going to focus on are methane and carbon dioxide. 
So first we need to know is how they are produced and we then need to know their impact and what they would do. So first up, where have they come from? Well, CO2 and methane are both produced largely through human activities, um, usually from the production, burning of things like fossil fuels, which is the main cause of um, CO2. And methane comes largely from things like industrial processes and um, large-scale agriculture. And what these two greenhouse gases do is they work in a particular way that when you receive waves of electromagnetic radiation from the sun, they, these waves arrive at short wavelengths because these short wavelengths can pass through the atmosphere. These short wavelengths are then absorbed into the Earth, so they're absorbed here by the Earth, and the Earth will then radiate out its own waves because that's what things do when they absorb electromagnetic radiation, they will then radiate some back out again. And these waves that they radiate out are long wavelength. So the short wavelengths are not absorbed by these greenhouse gases, but the CH4 and the CO2 will absorb these long wavelengths that are re-radiated out from the Earth. And when they absorb them, they will radiate the heat back out again, um, and radiating it and pinging this energy around in the atmosphere. So this energy is coming in from the sun, but it's not going out again. It's not going to happen. So we've got a higher amount of energy gain in the Earth's atmosphere than we have had previously. So previously a lot, a lot more of this uh, energy would have radiated straight back out into space and the Earth would have stayed at a relatively constant temperature. However, now we've got an increase in the greenhouse gases and an increase in this energy being reabsorbed. The consequences of this are that we could have things like ice caps melting, which is going to potentially lead to an increase in sea level, could lead to a change in rainfall, and that's either increase or decrease depending on the location so you have more areas of flooding and more areas having drought or it could be that a location in the world has periods of drought and periods of flooding throughout the year so extreme changes and the same we might have severity of storms increasing so how serious they are and also the frequency of them because of the change in weather and hot areas cold areas increasing and finally, the effect on species is it would affect their distribution. So where they are found in the Earth. Um, an example of that is uh, in a study about 10 years ago, they found that cod species had already moved on average three miles north to an area where, which is cooler. Um, and we'll see a lot more of that. So lots of migration of species, lots of invasion of species, and a lot of extinction coming as a result of that too, unfortunately. The evidence is the final part that we need to consider here. Evidence is critical in science, obviously, um, and the key term that they will use and question you on is something called a peer review. And this is where we've collected all the data and the evidence is shared between scientists and the peers, the various other people in science and in the field of the study, will examine the data and see if they agree with it. They'll be trying to detect, trying to detect false claims. Um, and they'll look at the method, they'll look at the data, look at the conclusions, and they'll pick it apart. In the atmosphere at the moment, we also have a bunch of pollutants that are working in various ways, and we need to know a little bit about these. And the first is carbon monoxide, and you notice it's monoxide, it's not CO2, it is CO. And what this horrible thing does is produced by combustion, in the same way that a couple of the others here are, and what it will do is it will bind to haemoglobin which is the molecule in your red blood cells which absorbs oxygen and transports it to your blood. Transports it through, through your blood to where it's needed. Um, and what it will do is it will permanently bind to that haemoglobin and it stops oxygen from binding. Uh, and this is obviously a real problem for people. Um, if you have too much of it, it will stop you getting enough oxygen around your body, effectively suffocating you. Um, but it also has no smell and no colour. So we can't actually see it, we can't sense it, which is why you need to have carbon monoxide alarms around in the house by, um, by fires and by boiler. Um, but that's produced by combustion, so a lot of that's produced in cars. We try and restrict that using a catalytic converter. The next is sulphur dioxide, and again this is by combustion. 
in its combustion of impurities in fuel, um, usually from things like coal. Coal has quite a lot of impurities, and this is one of them. Um, and sulfur dioxide will form acid rain, which we'll get onto in a second. But the sulfur dioxide will dissolve into rainwater, and it will make sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4. Not good. Not good. Nitrogen oxides do a similar thing, so again, they're from combustion. Um, it's from a reaction of N2 and O2 in the, in the air. They're from the atmosphere at high temperatures. Um, they will form things like NO2 and NO. And what those will do is, again, they'll dissolve in water and they'll make acid rain. This is nitric acid. And the other thing that these gases will do is they'll cause... Um, respiratory problems if they're breathed in because the H2SO4, um, the, the nitric acid that's formed will dissolve into your water that's in your lungs and cause respiratory problems. The final one isn't really a gas, it's more a solid and these are particulates, um, so tiny little clumps of carbon really called or soot um, and this soot basically comes from burning of things again in incomplete combustion um, in the same way that carbon monoxide is caused by that incomplete combustion. And as a result, that will form these solid chunks of particles um, that will lead to uh, loss of light in certain areas, smog if you like, um, and it will also cause respiratory problems if you breathe that in too. And that brings us to the end of our video on chemistry of the atmosphere. Thanks for watching, I hope it was useful. Please do check out the other videos we have available for the other paper two topics in chemistry and the other subjects in GCC science too. Any questions, please drop a comment, hit like, hit subscribe. Thanks.